in this picture we're get, or in this problem we're not given a picture we're given two triangles are, are similar it probably makes sense to draw two triangles that uh, are oriented in a similar way just so you don't get mixed up between what sides correspond with what make sure you label them the same way STP STP R U N R U N SP is 12 ST is 8 TP thank you ST is 8 or S SP is 12 ST is 8 TP is 11 RU is 36 As I just illustrated, it's easy to write it wrong. And if I would have done that, I would have probably set a proportion that included non-corresponding sides. We need to set up corresponding sides. Does that look right, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Can someone help us out? What are we going to do? How, what can we? What can we do? We want. We want to find these missing sides. Yeah, Emma. Okay, what did you call x? W w what value is represented by x on your picture? UN. UN. So I mean that that I, I bring that up because that's not an insignificant step. Calling something that you don't know a variable. We've been talking about that. Eleven over x. Now, what I have found to do, and I heard some of you describe, how do we know it's eight over thirty-six rather than x? 8 over 36 equals 11 over x rather than 8 over 36 equals x over 11. How do we know which one goes on top? Yeah? Um, what you, you can choose if you want 36 over 8 or 8 over 36, but if you do that, you have to, um, you have to continue with your pattern that you're going at. You have to take from one triangle and put it over the other for every side line. So if the small triangle's on top and then over the big triangle, the small triangle on the second ratio needs to be on top over the big triangle. This is important. Otherwise, what you're failing to do is match corresponding ratios. Corresponding ratios are the ones that are equal in a similar figure. So you got to make sure that you actually match it up. That's why I often draw arrows from one side to the other. 8 over 36. When Emma said that, I drew an arrow. So I know that I'm going to do 11 over x. Now I heard some of you mention cross multiplying here. I heard some of you mention can we do cross multiplying. Some of you weren't sure how it worked. We actually did this earlier today. Does anybody know why cross multiplying works? A few of us? Just does? Are we satisfied with just does? <laughs> I, uh, without getting too far into it, I made a claim that if we all just did what we were, some people were saying, well, we, because people told us to do it, so we're doing it. That, that is not a, a good situation for a thriving democracy. We need to question what people tell us and make sure we understand it and determine whether or not we want to use something like that. So cross multiplying. Let's just go A over B equals C over D. Under this cross multiplication, in quotes, what would this equal? A, B, AD equals CB. Let's see why that works. We're in geometry. We can prove things. Yeah? Okay. So now it's worth a revisit, right, of this idea. Well, then you don't need to use it. I mean, you, yeah, you don't need to use cross multiplication no, by any means. Hopefully. Okay. Well, let's see if you can remember now, now that you know more mathematics. Yeah? Well, let's, let's just think, how do we undo a divided by B? Multiply each side by what? B. B. So if I do this now, this cancels out, and I have A equals C times B over D. How do I undo a divided by D? 
multiply each side by D. And what do we end with? So all cross multiplication is doing is multiplying each side by these denominators to get rid of the denominator on each side. And it's just doing all of that work in one step. So that's a proof of why that works. If you feel comfortable with that proof and you understand that proof, then feel free to use cross multiplication if, or whatever you ca might call that. If you don't feel comfortable with that or you've got some questions, use whatever kind of algebra you're using. But you definitely want to be confident with why something works or you're inevitably going to make a mistake when you're trying to apply that to a new problem. So in this case, I multiply each side by 36 and x, and I get 36 times 11 equals 8x. What does x equal? Which means that the ratio of 8 to 36 is the same as 11 to 54. Can someone help us with the next to find uh, Rn? What do you mean by same thing? Okay, can you give us one? Do we need to use 8 over 36? Yes. Is that the only thing we could use? Yeah, we could use 11 over 54. Because remember, all of these are in the same proportions. That's the whole idea. If, this, if the triangles are similar, the proportions of the similar sides, the ratios of the similar sides are all equal. Now, you don't need to use both of them. Uh, what do we end up getting for y? Yeah, there is something wrong with this because the 11 is a smaller one and the 12 is the bigger one. So whoever was telling me the answers were probably just mixing it up. Thank you. This was 54? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for checking that.